Ecclesiastes chapter 1 has two instructions. We are looking at the word vow, a three letter word that is heavy, that ensnares and enslaves, but at the same time is a tree of life if you know how to use it well. Vows are a blessing. Vows acknowledge that, ah, I have someone that is superior to me. And if this thing I'm seeking, God, you can do it for me. You make a pledge, you say, I'll come back and do this and do that and do this. It is good to make vows. It shows that you are giving honor to whom honor is due. It shows that you are giving ascribing all glory to the person. It shows that you acknowledge the fact that there is a giver. And it is only him that can give you that which you seek. So vows are good. But the book of Ecclesiastes comes with a warning. It says, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. This leg. <laughs> we are so quick. And sometimes the preacher will say, run, 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 run. You then you just hear it. You just start to run. They tell you a uh, 24 hour miracle, miracle money. This, that, and this. I do not judge the experiences. I am not against whatever any ministry is doing. I didn't give them instructions. I'm not their instructor. They didn't hear from me. I didn't call them. But what I am saying is, Keep your foot when you go to the house of God. That's the word of God in Ecclesiastes 5. One. That means before you rush, before you begin to go, be sure. Know what they are calling you to do. Before you enter that covenant, that covenant, before you affirm, before you take a pledge and you do this, you do that. Before you confirm, before you take a pledge, before you say you give, before you make a commitment, before you are indebted, before you give your word of honor, before you give your bond, keep your foot. Hold your leg fast, well, and be more ready to hear. Second instruction is here. A lot of people, you see, even see sometimes some people that rush out before they begin to go back because. Maybe they want to be the first to touch the man of God's hand and all that. Really, the call was made. They just rush out, not listen to the instructions. And some men of God that don't want to ensnare, enslave, or bring burden or a curse on those they want to bless. We keep repeating. I will even tell you the, the consequence of your action should you fail. I like my mentor so very much. Sometimes when he calls for a pledge, a vow, we give a time frame. You see people will come out, they will rush out to give. Then he will ask them. He said, I said, he will repeat, I said, between now and Sunday, if it's a Friday service, or Tuesday service, between now and Sunday, he will give the time frame, two days, three days, Somebody will raise up his hand and say, not Sunday, Monday, you should go back. The instruction is between now and Sunday. Monday is not it. Tuesday is not it. Wednesday is not it. He will release. He will bless the person. Say, I bless you. But please go back. The instruction specific is for 24 hours, two days, three days, one week. So some rush with their feet, but they not hear well. Or hear what thing they can maneuver just to get the prayer. But Ecclesiastes 5 1 says, Keep your foot when you go out. <laughs> I like King James. Say, when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. But they consider not that they do evil. If you do not intend to keep it, or you do not have the means, and you do not know how, and you are doing faith. 
But that faith is not working. He said, don't give the sacrifice of food and continue to remain there. I know God redeem your pledge. He says, such people do evil. Not means in the Bible. <laughs> Keep your foot, Ecclesiastes 5 1. When thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. So if you rush out, you don't intend to keep it, or you rush out, and for that um, issue, you make an affirmation, a commitment, a pledge, you take an oath, and you do not intend to keep it. The Bible calls such a person a fool. They will not be fools in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you so very much for streamlining with us. My name is Pastor Mrs. Edith Ataken, General Vasily Abanoglu Ministries International. On Facebook, we have five vibrant pages, such as scriptures, nation building, ministers of the truth, where you pray and I pray. On YouTube, we have an account that is heavily loaded for you, Church on the Air, Abanoglu Ministries International, Edith Ataken. Like, share, subscribe, listen to the videos. They are short, short clips, independent of one another, but interrelated, interwoven. The various pieces make a whole, but each piece is independent on itself. It can stand as a message. Listen, like, share, subscribe. You get a lot of wisdom, a lot of insight, a lot of foresight from just seeing the word. God bless you. Are you out there? You don't know Jesus. You repeat after me, say, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sin, have mercy on me. The minute you say that, brother, so your sins are forgiven. Get a Bible, get a daily devotional. Stay in the Word. Listen to the Word, read the Word, feed your inner man with the Word. Then be practical with the Word. Talk it, live it. Act upon it, walk upon it. Your life and my life can never, never be the same again. My name is Pastor Mrs. Edith Atakin. Genova Sia Banablo Mrs. International. Thank you so very much for streamlining with us. On Facebook, five vibrant pages. Sadi Scriptures Nation to the ministers of the church. When you pray and I pray. Thank you so so very much. On YouTube, we have a vibrant account. Church on the air, Edith Atake. Banablo Mrs. International. So that is what's our account to pop up. Like, share, subscribe. God bless you.